Is there nothing left which we may still consider holy? It is difficult for us to fully understand the experiences of earlier generations. But there must have been a time when people were highly delighted because they owned the right name for God. With other words, a perception. With it they could perceive God, they could relate to Him, yes, even communicate with Him. Nameless, however, the Divine was eerily incomprehensible, yes, a dangerous force. At any time it could assail and destroy life. We Christians instead know His name if we call Him Father. But is God's name really holy to us? Or have we assented to an opinion that denies any holiness, be it's God's, the Bible's, or the Church? These institutions of faith seem to have lost their value for our modern societies. Does this mean that there is nothing left which we may still consider holy? Neither human dignity nor nature. Not as far as God is concerned are our nerves on edge but elsewhere. Scientists temper with the steering of life in gene technology. They come to understand the up to now unperceived and begin to use it. But in what they have perceived is life still holy to them? If not, we ought to be worried to death in the light of their experiments. Do we wait until a genetical catastrophe occurs? Or is there a way by which we will come to our senses and give the holy the space it deserves? Indeed, this way exists through prayer. The Lord's Prayer, as Luther put it, does not exist to convince God of His holiness. He has it anyhow and without our prayer. Just as a single flashing up of His might and we humans realize our own tininess. Therefore, the first petition of the Lord's Prayer is concern about God's holiness in me, in my life. God, fill your name which is so often dead and empty in my life. Fill me anew with yourself. Is it that we today may require, apart from the reading of the Bible, more existential experiences that expose us to the forces of nature? Angry storms and gentle whispering of the air, lava erupting volcanoes and quiet lakes, thunderbolts and soft rain, to be terrified, to shiver, but also to be emotionally touched, delighted. In prayer, man transcends opposites and finds a home in the Father's name. Praying the reference for him and the love of him grows. You are good.